quite some time. Okay, uh, the last thing that we want to look at before we move you guys on with this is the acceleration from a velocity versus time graph. We'll find that the velocity versus time graph is the most useful graph of, well, all of them, all right? So if we look at a velocity versus time graph, all right, uh, again, familiar units. Okay. And looking at this velocity versus time graph, what we're going to do is just go, well, something we've kind of seen before, right? Something very similar here. Okay. Now, one thing we know from the velocity versus time graph, we can find the velocity at just the face value of the graph. At time t, the velocity is whatever that is, just reading a graph. We know, too, that we can find the displacement of the object by finding the area under the curve in those places. But now we'll also note that if this right here is t1, v1, or the initial velocity at that time, and then this right here is t2, v2, we'll see something about the slope, which you probably already gets. The slope, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, in this case is v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1, which is change in velocity over the time, which means that the slope gives us the average acceleration of the object. So from a velocity versus time graph, we can find not only the velocity and not only the displacement of the object, but also the average acceleration of the object as well. Um, the end.